<laughs> Get ready. Today's deep dive yeah. is going to blow your mind. It is truly remarkable. We're talking about Helen Keller. An icon. Born in 1880. Right. But she became deaf and blind at just 19 months old. Yeah, think about that for a second. I mean, can you imagine? A world without sound. Right. Without light. Yeah. Now, when we say deaf and blind. Yeah. It's important to understand what that truly meant for Helen's experience. It's hard to even fathom. She couldn't hear a loved one's voice. Right. Or see a friendly face. It's total sensory deprivation. Absolutely. And I think that's where the story of Anne Sullivan comes in. Oh, yeah. Anne Sullivan, uh, Helen's teacher. This is the turning point. Yeah, you see, at the time, right. there were no established methods for teaching someone in Helen's situation. So she was really breaking new ground. A true pioneer, really. And and she developed this process of teaching Helen to connect words with objects through touch. Yeah, through touch. And and that's where we get to that famous water example. Right. So Anne would spell W-A-T-E-R. Into Helen's hand. Into her hand while running water over it. It's mind-boggling. It really is. Like, how do you explain an abstract concept like water? To someone who's never seen or heard it, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. And to think that this was all happening in the late 19th century. Yeah. What did tactile sign language look like back then? That's a great question. Was it different from how we understand sign language today? It was very different. Sorry. Back then, tactile sign language was still in its early stages. Mm -hmm. It involved spelling words letter by letter into the palm of a deafblind person's hand. Oh, wow. So unlike modern sign language, which yeah. has its own grammar and syntax, this early form was purely about spelling out words. So it was much more laborious, I imagine? Much more laborious and time-consuming. Right. But for Helen Keller, it was a lifeline. Wow. Her first taste of language... It was her first step towards connecting with the world beyond her immediate senses. It's incredible. And then comes that breakthrough moment where it all clicks for Helen. The sources describe it as a moment of pure exhilaration. Imagine the sudden rush of understanding. Wow. The realization that these abstract symbols in her hand actually represented something tangible, something she could experience. It must have felt like magic. Like a whole new world opening up to yeah. her. And for Helen, this was just the beginning. From there, she went on to learn how to speak, read, and write. That's incredible. These are incredible achievements for anyone. For anyone. But for someone with Helen's disabilities, it's truly remarkable. And it wasn't just about rote learning. No, Helen was a voracious reader. Really? devouring books in Braille. Wow. She developed a deep love for language and literature. And she even went on to graduate from Radcliffe College. She did. That blows my mind to not only overcome those initial communication barriers, but to then excel academically in a world that wasn't designed for her. It's amazing. It really speaks volumes about her intellect and her determination. It really does. But, you know, it also raises questions yes. about the barriers we create. Yeah. Often unknowingly. That's a good point. Imagine the potential that might be unleashed if we designed a world that was truly inclusive and accessible from the start. It's like we're only scratching the surface of what's possible. Exactly. Both for individuals and for society as a whole. And Helen Keller's life is a constant reminder of that. Yeah. Her journey wasn't just about personal triumph. Right. It was about pushing boundaries, challenging assumptions. And expanding our understanding of what it means to be human. Absolutely. So she graduates college and you might think, OK, that's the peak. Right. The peak of the mountain. Like that wasn't even close to the end of her story. Not even close. Helen went on to become a powerful advocate for social justice. This is what's so remarkable. Yeah. Despite her own struggles, she dedicated her life to fighting for the rights of others. This is incredible. She knew firsthand what it meant to be marginalized, to be told what you couldn't do. Right. And she used her platform to amplify the voices of those who were often silenced. It's like her life really becomes about more than just overcoming her own personal challenges. So much more. It's about creating a more just and equitable world for everyone. And her work wasn't limited to disability rights. Oh, really? Helen was our passionate advocate for a wide range of causes, including mm -hmm. women's suffrage, labor rights, and world peace. Wow. It's like she saw those connections between different forms of oppression. She did. How limiting one group ultimately limits us all. That's such a great point. Yeah. Her life and work highlight this interconnectedness of social justice issues. Yeah. You can't fight for one without fighting for all. So how did Helen's own experiences with disability shape her approach to activism? That is a fascinating question. And did she face any unique challenges in advocating for these causes? 
That's another great question, and it's one we'll delve into as we continue our deep dive into the incredible life of Helen Keller. Can't wait. What are your thoughts so far? I mean... What stands out to you about her journey up to this point? I'm just amazed by her resilience. It's truly inspiring. And your determination to make a difference. It's a story that continues to resonate today. Absolutely. So let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more on the incredible Helen Keller. It's incredible to think about the sheer scope of her activism. It really is. And what's striking is that Helen didn't just lend her name to these causes. Right. She was actively involved. Wow. Writing articles, giving speeches, uh -huh. engaging in public debates. And this was a time when women, let alone women with disabilities, were often expected to be seen and not heard. Exactly. So for Helen to step into that public arena and speak truth to power, it was a radical act. I bet she faced some pushback. Oh, absolutely. There was definitely resistance. From? Oh. Well, some people saw her as a puppet for others' agendas. It's interesting. Not a true intellectual force in her own right. But Helen wasn't one to back down from a challenge. No, she wasn't. I mean, she had faced down impossible odds her entire life. And she had this sharp wit. Oh, really? And a way with words that could just disarm her critics. Give me an example. Okay, so there's this famous anecdote where a senator okay. trying to patronize her said, Miss Keller, wouldn't it be terrible if you suddenly regained your sight and saw what the world is really like? Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. Uh, what did she say? Without missing a beat, Helen replied, Why, Senator? I think it would be lovely. Wow. I've always imagined the world to be quite beautiful. Uh -huh. And I'd hate to be proven wrong. That's brilliant. Yeah. She totally turned it around on him. She did. She, she wasn't just intelligent. She was clever and quick on her feet. Exactly. She refused to be defined by others' perceptions of her limitations. Right. And I think that's a key takeaway from her life. We often place limits on ourselves and others based on preconceived notions on what we think is possible. Helen shattered those limitations. So how did she learn about all these complex social issues? That's a great question. We're talking about women's suffrage, labor rights global conflicts, things that would be challenging for anyone to grasp, let alone someone who couldn't access information in traditional ways. That's where Ann Sullivan's role becomes even more crucial. Right. She wasn't just a teacher, she was a gatekeeper to the world. Interesting. She read to Helen constantly. Really? Keeping I... her up to date on current events, political debates, philosophical ideas. Wow, it was like having a personalized news feed. Curated and delivered through touch. And not just delivered passively. And Anne would discuss these issues with Helen. Oh, wow. Debate different perspectives, right. help her form her own opinions. It speaks volumes about the power of a good teacher. It really does. Of someone who can open up worlds and ignite a passion for learning. And I think that's a point worth emphasizing. Education isn't just about memorizing facts. It's about fostering critical thinking, about empowering individuals to engage with the world around them. So in a way, Helen's advocacy wasn't just an extension of her personal experiences. Right. It was an extension of her education, of her insatiable curiosity, and her desire to make sense of the world. Exactly. And it's important to remember that Helen wasn't just advocating for people with disabilities. Right. She was advocating for a more just and equitable world for everyone. And how does her advocacy work impact the disability rights movement specifically? Well, her fame gave her a platform that few others had at the time. Right. She was able to reach a wide audience to challenge prevailing attitudes and to inspire change. And this was long before the Americans with Disabilities Act, right? Long before. So what were some of the specific changes that Helen advocated for? She was a strong advocate for accessible education, uh -huh. pushing for the inclusion of children with disabilities in mainstream classrooms. Mm. She also campaigned for better employment opportunities, arguing that people with disabilities should be judged on their abilities, not their limitations. It's amazing to think how her ideas, which were considered radical at the time, have now become mainstream. It's true. I mean, we take for granted things like ramps, braille signage, closed, captioning all things that Helen fought for. And it's a reminder that progress doesn't happen overnight. No. It takes persistent effort, a willingness to challenge the status quo, and often a single voice to spark a movement. So we've talked a lot about Helen's activism, her impact on the disability rights movement. Yes. But I'm also curious about her personal life. Okay. Did she ever find love? Did she have close friendships? Well, Helen's life wasn't just about overcoming adversity and fighting for social justice. Right. It was also about love, laughter, and human connection. 
I like that. She had a close circle of friends and confidants. Good. And her relationships with them reveal a depth of tenderness and vulnerability that's often overlooked. That's a beautiful reminder that even in the face of extraordinary challenges, the human need for connection remains constant. It does, and it speaks to Helen's own humanity.